one in four women and one in nine men in the United States are victims of domestic violence at some point in their lives. Domestic violence includes physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. It occurs in all income groups, all races, religions, and education levels. If you are a victim of domestic violence, you are not alone. In Idaho, over 4,000 victims of domestic violence come to the court each year seeking a protection order. This video will explain to you what a civil protection order is, how to petition for a protection order, and what other resources are available to help you through the process. A protection order is a civil order issued by the court and is issued to protect you against a spouse, a former spouse, and a person related to you by blood, adoption, or marriage. You can also seek protection against a person you live or have lived with, have a child in common, a person with whom you have had or are having a dating relationship. A parent or legal guardian may file on behalf of a minor child. The court can only issue a protection order when there is evidence of physical injury, sexual abuse, forced imprisonment, or a threat of this violence occurring. A criminal no contact order is another type of order issued by the court to protect you from an abuser. If someone has hurt you and is arrested, a no contact order may be issued before the abuser can be released from jail. The no contact order is not the same as a protection order. The no contact order is a criminal order meant to protect you while the criminal charge is pending against the defendant. Even if there is a no contact order, you can file a petition for a civil protection order. There is no charge to file or serve a petition for a protection order. If the protection order is granted, it will order the abuser to stay away from your home, work, and other places you may frequently go. It may order the abuser to stay away from your children if there is potential harm to them. If you have decided that you need to file for a protection order, you must go to the clerk's office at the courthouse in the county where you live, where you are temporarily living, or where the abuser lives. You can find the location of the courthouse in the phone book or on the Supreme Court homepage on the internet. The clerk will give you a form called the Sworn Petition for Protection Order. You will be referred to as the petitioner and the party you are filing against is called the respondent. Fill out the form very carefully. It is important that you are specific about your situation and the abuse that is occurring. Write down details of what happened any injuries that occurred, and use exact quotes of what was said. If there are firearms involved, write this down and explain this on the petition. The judge must have all the information to make an informed decision. Once you file your petition, the clerk will either set a time for you to appear before a judge, or a judge may review your petition without a hearing. If a hearing is scheduled, this hearing is called an ex parte hearing. Ex parte is a term that means that you are appearing before the judge without the respondent present. The hearing will be set within one business day of your application. If you are in immediate danger, the clerk will try to set the hearing the same day as you file the petition. In the ex parte hearing, the judge will review your petition and may ask you to tell more about your situation. Be calm and clear. Answer the questions truthfully. If the judge finds that you need protection, a temporary protection order will be granted. This protection order will be good for up to 14 days or until the full hearing for the protection order takes place, whichever is sooner. If the respondent is in Idaho, the clerk will immediately forward the information you provide about the respondent and the protection order to the local sheriff's office. The sheriff's office needs the respondent's full name, date of birth, and address to serve the protection order. The Sheriff's Office will attempt to serve the order on the respondent within 24 hours, depending on the accuracy of the information you provide. If the respondent lives out of state, you must obtain a certified copy of the order after the hearing and arrange for service at your own expense. You can contact the local Sheriff's Office in the state in which the respondent lives to see if they provide this service or use the services of a professional process server. Once the protection order is served, the respondent must comply with its provisions. At the full hearing for the protection order, both you and the respondent will have the opportunity to come and present your story to the judge. You may wish to seek legal representation to ensure your legal rights are protected. 
If you do not have an attorney and the other party is represented by an attorney at the hearing, you can ask the judge for a continuance or rescheduling of the hearing to allow you to seek the advice of an attorney. If you would like to be represented by an attorney but are unable to afford the fees, there are a number of organizations that may assist you. Idaho Legal Aid, Idaho Volunteer Lawyers Program, and the University of Idaho College of Law Victims' Rights Clinic all provide free legal assistance to domestic violence victims with low income who qualify. The Idaho State Bar also has a lawyer referral service. Many counties have an advocate to assist persons who are asking for a protection order. An advocate is a person who works for the county or a domestic violence shelter and will assist you through the process free of cost. Though the advocate is not an attorney and cannot provide legal advice, they can be a very important resource for you. The advocate can assist you in filling out your petition, guide you in preparation for the hearings, and provide needed emotional support throughout the process. Ask the court clerk or local shelter about an advocate program in your county. A domestic violence court coordinator in your area can also answer questions about protection orders, the court process, and resources available in the community. The full hearing is a more formal hearing. Try to find childcare so you do not have to worry about children in court. This can be a very difficult time and not a helpful environment for children to experience. It is important to be on time, dress neatly, and be ready to present your information clearly and calmly to the judge. This is an emotional subject and it may help to write down the information you wish to present. You may also wish to bring any person that has witnessed the abuse and can tell the judge about what they have seen. Evidence such as copies of police reports, photographs, hospital reports, and recorded messages may be useful to the judge at this hearing. If the respondent does not appear at the hearing, the protection order may be granted by default. If the respondent does appear for the hearing and contests the order, then you must be prepared to present your evidence to the court. Any changes that need to be made to the protection order can be done at this time. If you do not appear at the hearing, the protection order request will be canceled and you will have to start the process again. It is important to understand that this is a civil proceeding. Any violation of the protection order may result in a criminal charge being filed. The judge who presides over your petition for a protection order will not be able to hear the criminal case at the same time. In addition, any divorce, division of property, or child custody issues will ultimately be settled in a separate civil case. Though the protection order may set temporary arrangements for use of property or child custody, the judge that handles the divorce or child custody case will make the final decision in this area. After hearing all of the evidence, the judge will decide if, by law, your situation requires a protection order. If a protection order is granted, it will be in effect for the period stated in the order, possibly up to one year. The protection order must be followed by both parties. Neither of you can have contact with the other unless specific exceptions are made, such as through a third party, by telephone, or by mail. Any modifications to the protection order must be approved by the court and a written court order issued even if you and the respondent are in agreement. This is very important to remember. The protection order may also decide on a temporary basis who will reside in the residence, who will have custody of the minor children, and how the visitation of the children will be structured. If the protection order allows for visitation, you want to make sure the exchange of the children is safe for you and the children and does not result in violation of the order. The protection order that is granted at this time is enforceable in other states as well. If either you or the respondent live in or plan to visit another state, you should receive a certified copy of the protection order and deliver it to the local sheriff or local police department in that state. You should keep a copy of the protection order with you at all times. You may wish to have multiple copies to keep in your car, home, and office. Copies should also be given to your children's school and daycare, the sheriff and local police department where you live, or places you frequently visit. The Idaho Hope Card program allows anyone with a valid 12-month or longer protection order to request a laminated card similar to the size and shape to a credit card. The Hope Card contains essential information about the protection order and a picture of the respondent for law enforcement in a durable, easy-to-read format. 
Hope cards are free. To obtain a Hope card, contact the Idaho Attorney General's Office at 208-334-2400 or go online. You will also want to inform friends and neighbors so that they can be looking out for your safety. You need to plan for your own safety as well. Drive a different route to work, shop in different stores than you normally would, and avoid places you may have gone with the respondent. It is important to understand that even though a protection order is a civil order, a violation of a protection order is a crime and may result in a criminal charge being filed. If a violation occurs, call the police immediately and report the incident. Document all violations to assist in the filing of criminal charges. A protection order can be renewed if there is still a threat to your safety at the end date of the protection order. If you wish to have the protection order renewed, file your request or motion with the court clerk at least a week or two before the end date of the protection order. The judge will decide if there is a good cause for renewal as required by law. The judge may do this without an additional hearing if the respondent does not object to the renewal. The Supreme Court has a program to walk you through completion of the petition on their website. The program gives you step-by-step -step instructions on the process. When you have provided all necessary information, you will be able to print the completed petition and take it to the courthouse in your county. Though this information may seem overwhelming, there are a number of resources available to you. A statewide domestic violence hotline can provide emotional support as well as important information on the process of protecting yourself. The hotline number is 1-800-669-3176. There are domestic violence programs located around the state that provide support, advocacy, temporary shelter, counseling, childcare, and other services. To find a domestic violence program in your area, call the Domestic Violence Hotline or log on to www.engagingvoices.org. There may also be court resources in your area, like a domestic violence court coordinator, family court services coordinator, or court assistance officer that can answer questions about the court process. I hope this video has given you a good understanding of the steps you need to take to petition for a protection order. Though your situation may seem hopeless, there are many people that are eager to help you move on to a life free from violence. Music